reading you made the news again. Charges relating to the slaying of a main force patrol officer Who was he? in a road blockade accident last Just another glory roader, I guess. I am a night rider. The Road Warrior, Mad Max. 45 years ago, the start of that film franchise kicked off. The year I was born, in actual fact. And although I didn't watch it when it first was released, I watched it as a young kid and it's still one of the most impressionable films I've ever watched. It has such raw, gritty, dangerous car chases, motorcycle chases, and frankly, motorbike gangs who I'm still terrified of to this day. But yet that film was one of the cheapest films to get made and it broke all the records for grossing the most money versus the investment. Today I've come to Somerset, not the Australian outback. It's not apocalyptic and it's certainly not burnt to a crisp and it's not lawless as far as I know. To meet a guy who has faithfully rebuilt the last of the V8s and he's gonna let me drive it. You're watching The Late Break Show. I'm Johnny the Boy. We are 100% staffed. You okay? He knows who I am. I'm the Night Rider, a fuel injected suicide machine. I'm a rocker, I'm a roller, I'm an out of controller. The tow cutter, he knows who I am. I am the Night Rider. I mean, the whole Mad Max film is, it's a bizarre film. It always was and it still is. It's shot in a strange way, it's very gritty, there's a lot of improv acting. The characters are strong and maniac maniacal. I, I mean, I watched it as a really young lad and I was bloody terrified. I was terrified that the, the future might be so bleak and horrible. And I was terrified of the biker gang because they were so bloody unhinged. It wasn't supposed to be set in Australia as such. I mean, yeah, it was an Australian film. <clears throat> and what I can't believe, I knew it made an unprecedented amount of money um, considering what the, the budget was. I think the budget for Mad Max was about $300,000. And it, and it was in the Guinness Book of Records for years until the Blair Witch Project came out as the film that grossed the most money versus the amount of investment. It was spectacularly low budget, but spectacularly exciting and extreme and raw. And as a, as a car film and a motorbike film, it, it's right up there because the stunts were so risky. The speed on, on screen was so real and visceral. Everything was shot low down. There were no people pulling over in Land Rovers waving at you. And it wasn't in leafy back lanes of Somerset, that's for sure. Of course, it was the film that made Mel Gibson famous. But it didn't start off in this black Ford Falcon XB 
coupe. He's originally in the four-door Ford, this livery, the MFP Interceptor or Pursuit Vehicle. Then when things really kick off, he gets in what is the last of the V8s. With the supercharger that's not really a supercharger because you activate it by pulling on a plunger switch which sets it going, which is ridiculous and pointless. But of course, as a kid, it was so exciting. So exciting. Never did I think that the one and only time I was going to get to, to, to drive a Mad Max replica would be in my home county of Somerset. Because <laughs> I, years and years ago, the, the original Interceptor movie car used to live in the UK. This was 20 something years yeah. ago and a museum up in uh, Cumbria called The Cars The Star. Privately owned, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy who was a retired dentist eventually sold up and sold all his movie cars and I think they all went to the States. Yes. So the original one lives in the States? In Florida, yes. Right. So tell me about your obsession with Mad Max, because I like Mad Max, but I'm not as bonkers about Mad Max to go and do this. This is commitment, Mark. It's big commitment. <laughs> but I've only been, always been into films. Yeah. And I wanted a film car. Yeah. So what shall I make next? Okay. And it's unique to have one in, in the UK. Really unique. So I found one in Melbourne. Yeah. Just to, just to show. No engine or gearbox. Yeah. And uh, had it imported. Got the body kit. Got the body kit. I found the guy who made the car on Fury Road. Yeah. He supplied with me. Supplied me with all the body kit. Yeah. Yeah. So this took you how long to build? It took about two years. Two years, right? So I've had it five years now. Yeah. Did you watch the film when it first came out, or were you a bit? No, young too young. You're too young. Yeah. So it would have been on the TV. Same as me. Seen it, seen it then. Were you terrified of the bikers yes. like I was? Yes. Like, like flipping <laughs> terrified. Yeah. So you knew you needed to find a Ford Falcon XB, XB. which is a two-door coupe. Yeah. The Australians you call them the hard top. The hard top. For some reason. Okay. <laughs> so you knew you, hard top. you knew you needed one of these. Yeah. But then you got you you've got to presumably put the car together in an authentic movie way because you were saying to me because I knew that supercharger is not, it's not actually supercharging. No, it's not functioning. Just like in the just film. The film. So it's the same as the film. <laughs> so you, again, you, you could have supercharged this car. Yeah. But you were like, no, I want no. it to be like a movie prop. Movie replica. Yeah. So yeah. that, I need to see the engine because I need to see how you've done this. So this, this is a real supercharger casing. Yeah. And that's a real uh, fuel injected and intake. Yeah. And all the pulleys. And all the pulleys. Yeah. But the, the cool thing about <laughs> Mad Max, well, as a kid, being blown away by... Superchargers are obviously driven by the engine. You can't stop and start them separate to the engine. But in Mad Max, he could. He just had a little... Uh, well, you've got it in there. Yeah. A lever next to the gear shifter, which engaged the supercharger <laughs> and made that like incredible sucking noise. Yeah. Goodness me. Right. So... Talk to me in it with, with the stats <laughs> and the numbers. So there's a 351 Cleveland engine. Yep. Uh, that I rebuilt. Yep. It came from a Mustang in this country. Yep. And the gearbox. Manual uh, gearbox. Manual gearbox. Right. Three speed at the moment. Three. Me meant that before, but. But uh, for now, a three. For now, a three. <laughs> yep. So you've got this pulley system. Yeah. Which runs off that electric motor of some sort. That's the electric motor from a radio control helicopter starter. What? Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay. So, so the starter for a radio control helicopter yeah. runs the, the pretend supercharger. Yeah. That's real, but not... But it sits on a... It's sitting on a plinth. Yeah. Just bolted to the inlet manifold. Over the carb. So it really is a, a It's prop. a movie prop. <laughs> so, you've got, so you've got that... You've got the body kit, and I remember that this, this sort of nose cone was borrowed off a, another custom car. It was a custom car in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they grafted it onto the front of this because this should front. have a flat front, like yeah. your T-shirt. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. what it should look like. Was it? And then work our way down so the side. Got, these Obviously, are flared arches, yep. front and back. Yep. Gloss black and then going into matte black, yep. where the body kit That's is. It. 
and the twin duck tails, which I remember just looking wild. <laughs> and they are huge. In fact, the car's huge. I forgot, because we don't see Australian cars in the UK at all. Um, this is the size of an American car. Yes, yes. I thought it would be slightly smaller, smaller. but it's not. But still based on the Mustang underneath. Right, The Mac right, 1. Right, which explains yeah. these dimensions. Yeah. The all important uh, zoomy quad zoomy pipes either zoomy side, pipes. which are functional. Yep, are yep. they? Yeah. So you had to build an exhaust for it. Yeah, I made the exhaust system for it. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what's making me laugh about all of this is? Is you live in a really idyllic, <laughs> safe, quiet, quiet. picturesque, <laughs> green leafy village, and yet this is supposed to represent sort of the apocalypse yeah. and the breakdown of law and disorder. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a it's such a strange <laughs> come on the back this is probably my favorite part of of the, of the interceptor because it's obviously sits a bit higher at the back yeah jacked up and the ducktails emphasize that yeah you can see the um the leaf spring mounts that have been jacked up to raise it yeah and what the hell are, i mean the tires are barrels <laughs> the cooper cobras i had cooper cobras on mm. my on my dodge and in the wet no grip, no. But they'll but they'll do eighty thousand miles without showing yeah, any signs yeah. of wear. But no grip. So what are these two nine fives or something? Yeah, two nine five fifty fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Whoa. So what were the hardest parts to find? Because there's obviously the the recipe for for an authentic Mad Max replica is the Mad Max car was a GT model. Yeah. So I've got all the GT bits on it now. Yeah. Okay. I think the fuel cap was the rarest one was it but really? we managed to find it in the end right because that's unique to the to the gt, GT. time time to pursue somebody then I kind of love that about it. He's got a real speedo down there in case this one's not to be believed. Got the authentic CB, the uh, the pursuit police light. There we go, look. I mean, I look in the rear view mirror and you can't see anything because of that huge ducktail spoiler and this box, which is encroaching on your, your vision. It rear steers. It really does, those barrel tyres. They're picking every groove in the road and they're sticking to it, which means you then have to adapt your steering to what the back has committed to. It's, it's weird. It's one of the most imposing cars on the road and hopefully you'll see that from, uh, from the shots we've taken. It just sits there and looks so right because that's what it was for. The body kit was built to look imposing as a movie car. With the supercharger and that bug catcher sticking out of the bonnet. The droop snoo. If you've, uh, if you've not been following the Late Break Show for a long time, you might not know that I've had a thing for muscle cars for a long time and my own car, uh, my own muscle car is a, a 68 Dodge Charger. I, I've done a couple of videos on it in the past, but not many. I'll put one on screen now if you want to know more about that. <laughs> it's all bark and no go. I kind of like that about it. Mark made the exhaust system out of a, <laughs> a load of Land Rover silencers and no zoomies imported from the States. But the 351, I think it's got a holly carb, pretty mild. It's a totally standard engine. I need to say thanks to Adrian Flux for covering me on the insurance on this thing. You know, just the, just the donor car uh, of, a, of a, a Falcon XB Coupe is a valuable thing these days. Um, Mark's obviously spent several years building this up to be as authentic as it can be to the movie car. I've had to insure it properly. I'm the only person he's ever let 
drive it. He hasn't even let his own brother or his own dad drive it. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, people often say that manual American cars are a bit agricultural, but I don't necessarily agree. My Dodge is a, th a 383 four-speed manual, and the gearbox is really nice. The clutch is really nice too, and this is the same. It's a really positive shift. There's good feel there. Clutch isn't too hard. I like it. I've driven far worse manual gearboxed cars from the UK and from Europe. So don't let anybody tell you that a manual muscle car is a, is a clunky thing. They're not that clunky. We've just come back to Mark's for a coffee break, but I wanted to show you this. Come and have a look. Because this is not the only car that Mark has. This DeLorean, which is absolutely mint, he's owned for over 20 years. So this is his real baby. The Interceptor's a more recent baby. Better still, it's been signed, not just by Christopher Lloyd, but by Michael J. Fox on the glove box. How cool is that? Really, really, really cool. And there's another couple of cars as well. Because that's all, that's done, that's on the road. On the boat. He's got his grandpa's car in here. A cute little MG Midget there. But that's on the road as well. Come around here. He's got something in the back garden. Of course, in his backyard, he's got tomato plants and uh, something that everyone's got in their backyard also, a Peugeot 403 that he bought off Facebook Marketplace because he's about to chop this four-door saloon into a replica of that Peugeot 403 Cabriolet because that's the car that was driven by Columbo, the TV detective who wore the dirty brown coat. You see, the thing about Mark is, is the joy is in the build. To open up the pillarless doors, festival of black vinyl, as is the way for an early 70s, mid 70s car. Yeah. And you've got, I've, no, I've just noticed the center boss of the steering wheel with That's the, Ma Max's wife and child. Yeah, and with the child is Sprog. Sprog. So you've got the, you've got the aftermarket steering wheel, the, the CB, the light panel, uh, switch panel at the top there, which I remember a lot of, and of course the little plinth with the, um, the emergency police yeah, light on yeah. it. Is this, is this, is everything new? Everything's new. Right. Even the centre console is new. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's new. Goodness me. Carpets. So you, you've got a three speed manual in here because you can't find a four not, speed yet? Not at the moment. Yep. Now, because you've not made it supercharged, presumably performance for this particular project was not like the most important no. element. No. <laughs> because you could have made this a genuinely fast yeah, car. Yeah. But you've gone, no, I want it authentic. And so I want to be able to use it. You just cruise. Just cruise around with it, yeah. And it makes all the right sounds. Yeah, yeah. From all, all eight exhausts. <laughs> so that's good. Mad Max is a really influential t uh, film yeah. for me. Yeah. But for a younger generation, I just don't know. No, they wouldn't know. Do they think this is something other than what it is? I get people think it's the Knight Rider. Right, car, okay. Or a Batmobile. Right, Batmobile, right, okay. <laughs> or Don's Charger. <laughs> oh, from Fast and Furious, yeah. because it's black with a with the supercharger, supercharger right up on it. it. Right, yeah. right, right, right. It's unlike any film. It's quite yeah. experimental, yeah. Yeah. but all the stunts were real. Mm -hmm. The budget was low, so lots of people had to kind of go the extra mile. And, yeah. um, and it launched M Mel Gibson's career. I'm just staring at it, because yeah. there's this little Picture, pass yeah. there in case he wants to get into the office. You know, <laughs> hanging off the old twin knob Ford Super Fringe radio. I have never heard of a radio being called the Super Fringe. Where, where do you use it? Do you drive it much? I don't do get used very often. No. I just do local shows. Do you? A local Comic Con down the road. Yeah. And do you, do you enjoy the build? I get the impression you're, you enjoy the build of these It's things. the making. Is it? Yeah, it's the making it. So you work it's on cars by day. Yeah. <laughs> and then you work on your own cars by night and yes. by weekend. Yeah. So you're very much a doer. Yeah. 
As you can probably tell, Mark really likes movie cars. It's mad to think that the first chance I ever get to see or drive a Mad Max replica, I'm back in the county where I grew up, where I first watched the film. And to this day, that film has such a profound effect on me and so many other people who are interested in cars and motorbikes, way, way, way before CGI and way, way, way before the Fast and Furious. And to be honest with you, to this day, I'm still a bit terrified of motorcycle gangs. Anyway, I want to say a massive thanks to Mark for letting me come and drive this car and to Adrian Flux for insuring me on it. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, I would love you to subscribe. And if you want to become a Patreon and support us that way, you get early access to videos like this and a blog from me every week with behind the scenes photos and videos. Cheers.